like this dance that we play where we want to make sure that our faces of identity are on straight. And it's like, I'm not going to call you out if you don't call me out. Okay, I won't call you out. And then we get angry at the person who actually does call people out. Oh, that's a person of character. They're going to call us out eventually. And yet I realize that this person who's across from me, they're a scoundrel just like me. The chances of them calling me out are pretty low. Now the chances of them calling you out are low. But are the chances of that person stabbing you in the back high? Well, of course. We're more concerned about that whole judgment thing about, oh, this person's going to, you know, they're going to judge me, they're going to call me out, and they're going to expose me as a liar. This other person might stab me in the back, but at least they won't expose me as a liar and a fraud. What are the consequences of people realizing that you're a liar? They distrust you. Uh, lost trust. I don't know. I really don't know, by the way. I really don't know. Because I, I find that, like, the, like, so many people... You guys ever find this, that there's someone who you absolutely know is lying, they're making something up, and you maybe you can prove it, maybe you do, and people still kind of shrug their shoulders and they're still friends with that person? And they still hang out with them? You know, well, you know, everyone's got their own point of view. Yeah, but I'm showing you that the person's not telling the truth. I can show you this. Yeah, but, you know, because, you know, we don't really like conflict. We don't really like to, to have to cut people off because then we have to deal with it. So I was like, well, I'm not going to get between it. Yeah, but this person is demonstrably wrong and is, and is doing terrible stuff. Yeah, but, you know, I see that a lot. I see that a lot. And it's like it's a knee-jerk thing we say, well, yeah, if a person's lying, then we're just not going to trust them. And by the way, that does happen, you know, you will see that happen quite a bit, but typically you'll see that happen in places that matter. In other words, if you're at work and your boss catches you lying about things, that's the person who's not going to trust you, not give you opportunities. But the people around us typically are the one you'll, uh, in, in kind of like the, the non-work world maybe, are the ones who will be so forgiving of it. And then it, of course it begs that question, why are we so forgiving of that kind of thing? Why do you suppose that is? Yeah. Because we do it every day. Yeah, to make, yeah. We all do it every day. Lying isn't just saying what isn't true. It's saying more than is true. We all do it every day to make life simpler. Is that this class? Yeah. It's, it's a quote from Albert Camus. I wasn't sure if we, if, if we did that in this class or not. But it's true. We do it every day. And there's like this dance that we play where we want to make sure that our faces of identity, are, 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 sorry, our masks of, of identity are on straight. And it's like, I'm not going to call you out if you don't call me out. Okay, I won't call you out. And then we get angry at the person who actually does call people out. Why? Because we're, we're more worried that that person's going to call us out eventually. Because we just realize, oh, that's a person of character. They're going to call us out eventually. And yet I realize that this person who's across from me, they're a scoundrel, just like me. So the chances of them calling me out are pretty low. Now the chances of them calling you out are low. But are the chances of that person stabbing you in the back high? Well, of course. But we don't think that far ahead. We're more concerned about that whole judgment thing about, oh, this person's going to, you know, they're going to judge me, they're going to call me out, and they're going to expose me as a liar. This other person might stab me in the back, but at least they won't expose me as a liar and a fraud. And so, yeah, we have to be careful about the things that we pretend to be. Now, it isn't just, of course, we think of it as, like, we have to, you know, we think of this in the negative ways. But here's the thing, if you pretend to be kind, uh, what are some aspects of kindness, by the way, when we say that we're going to be kind? Yeah. Be courteous. Be so, both gracious. You know? Okay, so, we have to be, so that might be courteous, gracious, yeah. Yeah, I called on you, what? <laughs> say it. Uh, I need time to write. Hurry up, say something. <laughs> what did you say, courteous and? Gracious. Gracious. When you have letters here, dude. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be, uh, whatever this, whatever these things are, we're going to pretend to be those things. Now, here's the problem: pretending to be those things means it's not it, genuine. Well, it might be. What's that? It's not genuine. It's not what? Genuine. Genuine. So what? I really mean that, by the way. So what? So if if you're not genuinely courteous, but you behave courteously to me, does that matter to me? You know? Yeah, it's like, you know, 
what was it? I think I was saying it last week in this class. Like Mr. Beast donates all that money to cure people of their blindness, yeah. and people are like sitting there with their arms folded. He's only doing it for money. And then you really think that the person who's getting their blindness cured is sitting there going, "I'm not going to do it because he's only doing it for money." Who cares? Is your blindness cured or not? If the person's being courteous, are they being courteous or not? Well, they don't really mean it. Uh, okay, that's fine. You know, would you rather have someone be nice to you and, and mean it? I'm sorry, would you rather have someone be nice to you and not mean it? And somebody be mean to you and not mean it? So, I don't know, I really, I, I really wonder. I really wonder that question. But in any event, if you behave courteously, guess what happens? That's what makes you courteous. It's like if, you're, if you lie, what does that make you? A liar, yeah. If you steal something, what does that make you? A thief. A thief. No, not a stealer unless you play for football in Pittsburgh. It makes you a thief. So if you're lying, then, well, uh, surprise, surprise, that makes you a liar. So you, and you, well, I was just pretending to lie. Yeah, but you did, though. And that's what made you the thing. In other words, we aren't what we say. We are what we continuously do. That's what makes up your character. That's what makes up your life. And so we must be careful what we pretend to be because we might actually end up being that thing. Now, that doesn't always happen, of course. You know, this, I, we talked before about the idea of fake it till you make it. Eh, whatever. But, you know, be careful about the things that you pretend to be. Now, understand that there's a great power in this as well. That the thing that you pretend to be very well could be the thing that you become. So I've given that example like a million times in class this year about running a marathon. You tell people that I'm a marathon runner. I pretend to be a marathon runner. And I pretend to be it. I mean, I'm so committed to the bit that I go out and I actually run sometimes because I have to, have to have people see me running. And so what ends up happening? Well, you start getting into shape. And then you start thinking, huh, I wonder if I actually could do this thing that I've been lying about. Then you actually do see it through. It's possible. It's possible. Um, <coughs> if you pretend to be kind, of, by the way, there are also people who pretend to be mean. And if you pretend to be mean, people will perceive you that way. And a lot of life is perception. In other words, perception is reality, you're going to find. If people see you a certain way and they believe you to be a certain way, they're going to behave in reality as though you are that thing, whether it's kind, whether it's mean, whether it's wise. Um, and then there's this weird thing that a lot of times we conform to those expectations that people have of us. If people expect us to be a screw-up, what happens a lot of times? Yeah, we become screw-ups. Well, that's what everybody expects of me anyway. That's why it's so dangerous to approach life from this philosophy of, you know, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to work hard so you can prove everybody wrong. So then you're going to live your life based off of, the, based off of the, um, the perceptions of others, based off of the expectations of others. Well, everyone expects me to be, to, be, to, be, to be late, so I'm going to prove them wrong. How about you just do it because it's the right thing to do? And that way it doesn't really matter what people think one, one direction or the other. And I know that it always matters what people think, but I'm saying in terms of your own motivations. In other words, find the motivation inside yourself. Because now what happens if I believe in you? You know what? I'm going to prove them wrong. <laughs> I'm going to ruin my life just to prove them wrong. It isn't about proving people are right or wrong because the people who are in your life, with very few exceptions, aren't going to be in your life for very long in the grand scheme of things. You will have some friends who last a lifetime, this is true, and you'll have family members who last most of your life. You're also going to have friends who are only there for a short bit, and you're going to have family members who are going to be there for way less than you expect them to be. And so if you continuously live your life trying to satisfy the expectations or defy the expectations of others, you're not really in control of your own life. You're just being directed around by other people. So we are what we pretend to be, whatever that thing is. So we must be careful of what we pretend to be because that's how people are going to perceive us. Make sure that whatever you're pretending to be is the thing that you want people to perceive you as. And make sure that whatever you're pretending to be is something that's noble, honorable, virtuous, and hopefully become that thing because you may end up becoming that thing. Ah, it's first period, right? So don't pretend to be a murderer. There we go, I know. I had to bring it to murder somehow. Everything leads back to murder. Yep. See, I can't pretend to be a murderer if I already am. That's true. That's true. And I don't even know if you're a murderer because we don't know we don't know. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, life is suffering. <laughs> Questions, comments, <laughs> concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I couldn't put those away.